Hello everyone, my name is Antonio and I am an optometrist with a background in vision science. And today we'll attempt to figure out why people see the dress differently. In this video, we'll explore what factors play a role in the dress looking differently to other people, if we can digitally manipulate the true colors of the image, and we'll also do an experiment to find out whether we can artificially change a person's perception using eye drop medications. Are the colors that you see on this dress a combination of blue and black or white and gold? I'm really curious as to what you guys think, so let me know in the comments below. In 2015, a mysterious picture emerged from the internet. It was of a wedding dress that caused a lot of confusion about what exactly its color was. I remember seeing this photo during my days in university studying optometry and vision science and being so polarized because even my colleagues, who were supposed to be the vision science experts, were so divided because many of them saw blue and black, whereas many others, including myself, saw and still see white and gold. And although the original colors were later revealed to be blue and black, for a person like myself, who still sees it as white and gold, I wanted to find out exactly why some people perceive it differently. I recently stumbled across a research article that studied a bunch of people and looked to see if their age, gender, or pupil sizes had anything to do with whether they saw blue and black as opposed to white and gold. And what they found was that from the participants that selected blue and black, they, on average, had a significantly larger pupil size than those that selected white and gold, while the age and gender didn't seem to matter. So I was intrigued. What is it about having bigger pupils that allow people to see colors differently to those with smaller pupils? Perhaps it's the amount of light getting into the eye, or it may be something to do with the brain itself and how it controls the size of the pupil depending on how it processes colors. However, another research mm -hmm. article looked at 1400 participants and studied their responses to this image. Overall, 57% of subjects described the dress as blue and black, 30% as white and gold, and 11% as blue and brown. But in this study, they concluded that the age did in fact matter, as the people that were older were more likely to choose white and gold over their younger participants. Which in hindsight makes sense because it's completely normal for the pupil size to decrease as you age. Mm -hmm. They also found that it didn't matter whether the participants had seen the image prior to the study or not, as more people saw blue and black compared to white and gold regardless of their experience with this image. Scientists over the years have agreed that people who see blue and black were likely to unconsciously correct for a warm illumination whereas those who saw white and gold corrected for a cooler illumination. We could even demonstrate this by bringing the image into Adobe Lightroom and playing around with the color temperature. If you take the picture, establish the white balance by making the yellow light in the periphery more white rather than yellow, decrease the overall exposure because this picture is obviously overexposed, and you can see why a blue and black dress can deceivingly look white and gold. If you wanted to reverse engineer this, you could replicate this photo by putting your camera's white balance settings on something like daylight and crank the ISO up to max so you overexpose the image. This in turn will make the blue look white and the black look gold. You can see in this image that by illuminating a blue and black dress with warm lighting, it yields the same color as a white and gold dress in a cold lighting condition. Or how about this picture that clearly shows that the blue and black dress being a completely different color when seen in direct sunlight. Another study that included 1100 participants looked to see whether overly emphasizing the background color had an effect over a person's perception and interestingly, a significant number of participants saw blue and black on a yellow background with the opposite happening on a blue background. I guess you could say that those who see blue and black on the original image are better at picking out the clues in their periphery to see what the true color of the dress is. And maybe that involves having larger pupils, who knows. If you're having trouble seeing the blue and black in this dress, the trick I found is to stare at the bright yellow background for about 10 seconds and then stare at the bottom part of the dress. 
I find that this helps me see the blue and black more as it lets my brain know that I'm looking at a very warm and overexposed image. But is there a way of artificially changing someone's perception with the use of medications? To find out, I've designed an experiment. My colleague George and I will dilate our pupils using mydriatics to see if it changes our perception of the dress. If the people that see blue and black generally have larger pupils, then will having larger pupils let us see blue and black? We'll find out. And now we're in an eye clinic. Before we continue, I would like to just let you know that George and I are trained professionals. George is an optometrist and so am I. Please do not try this at home. Before we put the eye drops in, George, what colour do you see in this dress? Uh, golden white. Golden white, same. I see golden white as well. So when we put the eye drops in and then once the pupils dilate, uh, hopefully we see something different. I doubt it, but let's give that a crack. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is blue eyes like George's dilate much quicker than brown eyes like mine. So we'll be taking a photo every 10 minutes to record that process. That's quite times. Oh, I can kind of feel my accommodation go. Yeah. It just feels funny at first though. It's like that strain, I guess. I guess it's having to work the muscles a bit harder than you used to. It's been about 10 minutes, so let's see what our pupils are doing. I don't know, that still looks... Still looks very... Because you wouldn't expect just a... Like that. Oh my god, it's blue and black now. Oh, it's getting really bright now. It's been about 20 minutes and things are starting to get really bright. So let's see what our pupils are doing. How long has it been? 20 minutes. So at 30. 30 we don't know. It's so funny how just like one picture can go so viral that yeah. everyone just knows about it for some reason. It's ridiculous how I made now polarizing it. Mm. Alright, so it's been about 30 minutes. Uh, this eye drop peaks at about 30 minutes, so we'll see what the pupils are doing. Obviously my one's quite big, so I have to wear sunglasses because it's so bright now. But um, yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. Our pupils are really large, so everything's quite bright now. But it's the moment of truth. George. Do you see this as white and gold still, or is there a hint of blue and black? That's still white and gold. Oh, is that? Yeah, same. I, I think, yeah, it's it's just brighter now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit blurrier. Yeah. yeah, but no, I agree that that definitely does look it's white, and, white gold. and gold. Although, I don't know if it's just me, but it does look a little bit more blue. I think... Yeah, the white is a bit more blue, but I just can't see that as, um, as black and blue at all. Yeah. So there you have it. Proven. <laughs> Debunked. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did we learn today? We learned that the dress is in fact blue and black, but it can seem white and gold depending on the type of lighting you have that you can digitally correct the image to replicate its true colors. And we also learned that we cannot artificially change our perception of the image by increasing the pupil size. But that just about wraps up today's video. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.